The ability to take payments in a secure and user-friendly way on any online store is crucial. There are multiple ways to take payments from customers on a WooCommerce store. And WooCommerce provides many options for you to do this. If you perform a quick search in the plugin repository, you'll see there are multiple third-party options to choose from. In our course, we're going to explore the inbuilt PayPal standard option first of all, and then we'll move on to integrating the free WooCommerce Stripe plugin. Before we begin configuring our PayPal settings, please first ensure that you have an active PayPal business account. Navigate your way to WooCommerce, Settings, Payments, and then select the Setup button to begin. As you can see, we're presented with several options to configure and link our PayPal account. You will also see these handy tooltips located next to several options. Hovering your mouse over these brings up more information about the option. Please note that some settings below are optional, like the IPN email notifications and identity token. We're going to enable them all and take you through the steps on how to configure these, as all stores will have slightly different setups, and we'd like to cover all bases. First, we'll enable PayPal Standard. Next, we have the option to amend the title and description, which is shown on the checkout page. We'll leave these as they are for our store. Now we need to enter our PayPal email address. Be sure to double check this once you've entered it, as an incorrect email address will not allow your website to connect to PayPal successfully. Under Advanced Options, we have the ability to enable a PayPal Sandbox account. A Sandbox account allows you to perform test transactions, and to use this feature, you'll need to sign up for a developer account. To find out more about this, please consult the PayPal documentation. Debug Log is a useful tool if you're experiencing any issues with your transactions. Be sure to leave this switched off if your store is running correctly. We'll enable the IPN email notifications. This will send notifications when an instant payment notification is received from PayPal, indicating refunds, chargebacks, and cancellations. If your main PayPal email differs from the PayPal email entered above, you can input your main receiver email for your PayPal account here. We'll leave this blank as ours doesn't differ. Now we'll enter our PayPal identity token. This will allow payments to be verified without the need for PayPal IPN. We'll open our PayPal account in a new tab and navigate our way to Account Settings Website Payments Select the Update link next to the Website Preferences option. Enable Auto Return and then add your store's thank you page link in the return URL field. Once this is added, select Save. Now enable the Payment Data Transfer and copy the Identity Token. Head back to your website's dashboard and paste your token into the field. Next, you can amend the invoice prefix if required. You can opt to have WooCommerce send shipping details to PayPal to create shipping labels instead of billing. We'll keep this enabled for our store. And next we have an address override option. PayPal verifies addresses, therefore this setting can cause errors. We recommend keeping it disabled, but it can be useful in preventing address information from being changed. The Payment Action options allow you to specify if you would like payments to be captured immediately or authorise them only. If you choose to authorise them only, the customer will be charged once the order status has been updated to processing or completed. In the Image URL field, we're able to set a logo to appear on the PayPal checkout page. Please note that this image should be 150 pixels by 50 pixels. And finally, we have the API credentials. There are three fields we must populate here. They are API username, API password, and API signature. To find this information, head over to your PayPal account and navigate your way to Account Settings, API Access, Update. On this page, scroll down until you see MVP slash SOAP API Integrations Classic and select Manage API Credentials. Ensure request an API signature is selected, and then select Agree and Submit to generate your API credentials. 
On each credential, select Show and then copy and paste into your website's dashboard. Once you have done this, simply save your settings and your store is now ready to accept payments with PayPal. The next payment processor we'll enable in our store is Stripe. Please ensure first of all that you've already set up and configured a Stripe account with all your relevant banking and business information. WooCommerce provides a free plugin to allow us to connect our store with Stripe, so let's install that first. Head over to Plugins, Add New, and search for Stripe. As you can see, the official WooCommerce Stripe plugin appears first of all. So go ahead and install this and activate the plugin. If we now go back to our Payments tab in the WooCommerce settings, you will see that Stripe is now present and ready for us to configure. Stripe integrates with many different payment providers, but for our store, we would simply like to allow customers to make a payment with a credit or debit card, so we'll be configuring the first option here. Enable Stripe and then head to the Settings screen. And just like with PayPal, we're able to amend the title and description which appears on the checkout page. The Stripe plugin provides two methods of connecting your Stripe account. We can first of all select the button located in the Stripe account key area to automatically connect our account and import our account keys across. Or if you prefer, you can manually log into your Stripe account and copy and paste these keys over. Let's select the Setup or Link an Existing Stripe Account button and then log into our Stripe account. From here, we're asked to select our business and connect. After a few moments, you will be redirected back to the WooCommerce settings page, and as you can see, our live and secret keys have automatically been populated. Next, we must add our webhook endpoint to our Stripe account. Doing so ensures that we're able to receive notifications about transactions. First, copy the webhook endpoint, and then in a new tab, log into your Stripe account. Navigate to Developers, Webhooks, and select Add Endpoint. Paste the endpoint into the field and under Events to Send, select Receive All Events, then Add Endpoint. Whilst we're on the Webhooks page, we can also grab our Signing Secret and enter it into our website's dashboard. Under Signing Secret, select Click to Reveal and paste this value into the field titled Webhook Secret. Before we move on, you'll see in the WooCommerce settings page that Stripe provides a test mode option. These keys are not automatically populated, so let's add those now. Over in our Stripe account, we need to check the toggle View Test Data. Now we can copy and paste our test publishable key and test secret keys. We can also add the webhook endpoint to the test data. and finally, the test webhook secret. With test mode still enabled, let's save our settings so far. And if we switch over to our checkout page and select Stripe as the payment method, a notice appears instructing the user that test mode is enabled and even provides some helpful instructions on how to perform a test purchase. Let's switch back now, disable test mode and continue with our Stripe setup. We can set our credit card form as inline, meaning that the date and CSV field will not be separate. We'll enable this option. Next, you can control the information which is displayed on your customer's invoice. We'll simply enter Bakerson's. And like with the PayPal configuration, we can control if we would like the funds to be captured immediately or when the order is set to processing or completed. Stripe can also enable payment buttons from Apple Pay and Google Pay. If you would like to enable these on your store, you can do so here. With this option enabled, you are presented with some additional configurations. You can set the type of button, as well as the theme and height. Saved cards, if enabled, will allow users to pay with a saved card during checkout. Card details are saved on the Stripe servers and not on your store. And finally, we can enable logging of debug messages. This is helpful if you're experiencing any issues with your transactions. 
Save your changes and there we have it, your store is now ready to accept payments with Stripe. If we now visit our store and proceed to the checkout page, you will see that our two payment options are now live and ready for our customers to use. WooCommerce provides excellent integrations with many third-party payment providers and many of these plugins are expertly supported and well documented. We've covered two of the major payment providers but be sure to explore what other options are available for your store. In our next lesson we'll take a look at customising our emails, creating coupons and managing our orders.